just give you a brief overview for those who don't know of, of who we are. And we'll talk about some tools and work, uh, workflows, including our overall FMI portfolio, and specifically three products uh, for MATLAB, Excel, and CarMaker. And then we'll kind of conclude. So what is our mission? Um, we have a nice mission statement, and it's to offer, develop and offer industry standard solutions for model-based systems engineering. Our strategy is focused around Modelica and FMI open standards. It's part of the core of our company and the core of our business. Uh, we provide research and development and distribution of software components and associated services. Our business is broken up into uh, several different segments, including software research and development, where we develop Modelica libraries and FMI tools, which we'll talk about today, and also training courses. In terms of the solution sales, we're, uh, we're partners with several important companies. We are a MathWorks Connections partner, and we're very proud of that partnership. And we're, uh, we've been long partners uh, with Dassault Systems, and uh, we are a solutions partner there where we are a reseller of uh, Daimler and V6 portfolio. And then we also have our own Modelica libraries and tools. We do offer training courses in uh, Daimler, Modelica, FMI, and, and specifically around our libraries, and then engineering services um, and basically helping customers implement um, open standard solutions in their own uh, workflows. Where are we located? Um, we are over 75 engineers, um, most with masters or PhD levels, and dedicated to Modelica and FMI. This is the work that we do uh, exclusively. Um, the company was founded in, in Sweden, and we have offices in Lund and Gothenburg in our Model on AB organization in Germany, in Munich, Stuttgart, and Hamburg, and then the most recent branch is Model on Inc., where we're located in Ann Arbor, where I'm located, and also in Hartford, Connecticut. We have customers among global Fortune 500 companies and have experienced roughly 30% annual growth since the company was founded. So that's our short introduction. Um, I thought this, this image was uh, particularly compelling. Um, th this is uh, sort of the walled garden approach, and those of us that have been users of uh, CAE tools probably recognize this, uh, trying to make tools uh, work with each other, standing on top of other tools, trying to boost each other up. And, and I think before FMI, this was pretty representative of, of the CAE space. So what does FMI do? I mean, we've heard this from, from the overview and the, and the solutions that you've heard from different vendors. FMI really helps break down these walls. So hopefully we won't have to work so hard to scramble over a wall to connect tool A and tool B. And I think that's it's important, and we heard it from, from the Ford side and we heard it from the Whirlpool side, is, is that if we're talking about model-based systems engineering, there's, there's different perspectives, and, and, uh, and Dale mentioned this. You know, there are people that, that their fundamental job will be to create models. They're going to have specific domain knowledge and, and perhaps specific tool knowledge. That could be Daimola, MapleSim, many other tools. Um, but there are a number of engineers that just need to use models. They're, it's not necessarily feasible to think that they're all going to be trained in every software tool. Uh, in some companies, there are, there are engineers that run analysis in many, many different tools, and they can't possibly be an expert in every one. So we might say that while they have knowledge and they need to do engineering, they may, they may be more comfortable in a different, a different environment, maybe something like Excel. And we, we heard about some custom interfaces in Excel developed uh, by these customers. And I think this is, this is really important. I mean, FMI, yes, it gives us this tool portability, but I think from the deployment aspect, that's been a, kind of a unique benefit that, that many customers have, have realized as a, as a side benefit of FMI. What does our FMI portfolio look like? Um, we have uh, fundamentally uh, some core products uh, that help uh, integrate FMI technology, for example, into uh, custom tools or to help tool vendors implement FMI technology. That's FMI library, FMI C++, and, and FMI.net. Uh, we have several end user tools. Um, one is FMI Toolbox for MATLAB that integrates FMUs with MATLAB Simulink. FMI add-in for Excel, which offers integration with Excel. FMI Toolbox for CarMaker, which offers integration with IPG CarMaker. And then PyFMI, which is an open source tool that allows integration with Python. And I'll talk about this in a minute. Here's the way the software stack looks. At the, at the fundamental basis of all these tools is open source FMI library. And I've had several people ask, well, what does it take to become FMI compliant? You heard from other vendors how they've done so. Um, we offer this open source FMI library, which implements many of the standard functions that you need uh, to become FMI compliant. This FMI library, is, of course, serves as the basis for all our products. 
It serves as the basis for the compliance checker, which is maintained by the Modelica Association, for Pi FMI, for our end user tools like FMI Toolbox for CarMaker and MATLAB, and then built up with these toolkits for FMI Ed and for Excel. So these tools in light blue are to help tool vendors uh, implement FMI interfaces, and then we also offer tools to help users leverage FMI technology. So we, we heard a lot about FMUs and how I can use an FMU, but um, how easy is it to create this magical FMU? And you know, you can do it in many different tools. This is an example of Daimola. Daimola gives you a, a menu option. You, you choose the kind of FMU you want, model exchange or co-simulation, which version, um, even some uh, beta support for 2.0. And then you basically hit this button that says create FMU and out pops an FMU. I mean, it's, it is really that easy. Uh, these FMUs are not something that you need to do anything special to create. If you can compile a model, then you can create an FMU. So now I'll talk about some of the different products that we offer. FMI Toolbox for MATLAB is a product that uh, integrates FMUs into MATLAB Simulink environment. So there we can simulate compiled dynamic models in Simulink. Uh, we can configure parameters, start values, outputs. Uh, this tool currently supports FMI 1.0, but of course will support FMI 2.0 when officially released. Uh, the latest version actually was released yesterday, FMI, uh, FMI Toolbox 1.7. And it also supports one-click export of Simulink models as FMUs using Simulink Coder. And as I mentioned before, we are a MathWorks partner uh, with, this, with this product. So what are some of the use cases for FMI Toolbox? Lots of us know that Simulink is a common integration environment, and as such, we need to get models into that environment. That's certainly one reason for this, for this toolbox. Integration of physical models with controls, obviously, MATLAB Simulink is a de facto controls environment, and we need to be in that environment with our, with our physical models as well. Um, with the export of, uh, of Simulink models, we can also integrate existing code in Simulink with other tools by exporting as FMUs. Um, and we can integrate FMUs with other MATLAB toolboxes and scripts, such as optimization toolbox or control design. And this toolbox offers native design of experiments, Monte Carlo sensitivity analysis, and design space exploration and really gives you the opportunity to do formal controls design using an FMU as a simulation engine. So this is a picture of what, a, what an FMU in Simulink will look like. It's unfortunately not so exciting. It's just a regular box in Simulink, which is actually exactly what you would expect. So here's a model that we could have coming from any tool. In this case, it's an example from Daimola that we then bring in as a, as a box in, in Simulink. So what, is, what do the steps look like with FMI Toolbox? It's very easy. You have either a co-simulation or a model exchange block. You drag that into your Simulink model. You click load FMU. You have access to add outputs if you'd like. You have access to all the parameters and start values that you might want to change. You add boundary conditions and then you simulate. It's that easy. And it has to be this easy because we know that many customers are, have been using Simulink for almost everything. And if we're gonna say, well, perhaps there's a physical modeling tool that could meet your needs better, we know that we still have to offer as seamless as possible an integration with Simulink. And with these, with FMI, it is really a, a, a process that can go from click to click in less than three minutes out of one tool and in as a, as a FMU in an FMI toolbox. What about export from Simulink? This is a relatively new feature that was implemented uh, in the last release and has been expanded uh, in the current release to uh, export not only model exchange but also co-simulation FMUs from Simulink. Um, we can generate FMUs from Simulink and it's built on top of Simulink Coder. And this allows you to do one-click export of Simulink models to other FMI compliant tools. What about Excel? I mean, we all have I'm sure used Excel. I've seen some crazy Excel tools um, built up in the past. So what this tool allows you to do is to, uh, to simulate an FMU in, in, uh, in Microsoft Excel. Again, this is a, a perfectly good example for doing batch simulations and parameter sweeps. I'll show you some, some applications there. Um, sensitivity analysis, design and space exploration. Again, the tool currently supports FMI 1.0. In terms of model exchange, we can only support initialization of models because there's no built-in integrator in Simulink. 
But with a co-simulation FMU, we can initialize and perform dynamic simulations. Um, one of the other nice features of this tool is it offers um, the, the user to uh, create a, a user extendable front end for custom experiment interfaces. We know not everybody likes to, to see the same kind of interface for a model. And in Excel, it's very easy to create a custom front end. I'll show you that. And we also expose um, all of the APIs that are used with this tool. So you can actually build a fairly complicated workflows uh, with automation using VB scripting. So what does it look like? Basically, you take your FMU that you create from any FMI compliant tool, uh, and you load it into uh, Excel, and then you have an FMI ribbon that allows you to select parameters and operate with it. Um, this tool gives you both the ability to create experiments and also the ability to see your results in a standard spreadsheet format, and potentially a way to distribute models throughout uh, organizations where behind the scenes is, a, is an FMU that has whatever level of physics is required to do the job that's needed, but the person that it interfaces with it gets a, a fairly simple environment like Microsoft Excel. So what are some of the things that we can do with a, with a tool like this? Um, obviously, the, the really easy thing to do is to do things like batch sims. So load a model, run many different cases, whether that be different for example, drive cycles, changing vehicle parameters, boundary conditions, and controls parameters. That's a, a very common interface. So what we do is we provide a very fundamental interface for, for running an FMU in Excel. We give you the ability to, to pick parameters. We give you the ability to set up these experiments, run as many cases as you want. This is another application that we've been involved with, which is actually a, a model calibration exercise. Uh, this customer wanted to set up uh, in Microsoft Excel, a very standard test bench that they do, uh, where they wanted to uh, model um, a particular heat exchanger and also calibrate that heat exchanger to bench data. So what we helped them do was to set up a, a standard spreadsheet that would uh, take in the data that they always provide from the bench side, calibrate the model, and you can even do um, kind of custom calibration exercises right here online with the model, set up any kind of results you want to see from the calibration. One of the nice parts about this tool is its automated core utilization. So there's a, a parameter here that says number of processes. So this tool will automatically use all the cores on your machine to spawn off um, simulations. Um, in some cases, they run so fast that we don't care, but there are lots of cases where they don't. And that's obviously nice to have. We don't need any complicated tools to, to do anything. This tool manages all the core utilization. So I have an eight core machine. If I have 30 bench tests that I need to calibrate, well, at least they run eight at a time. This is an example of uh, the kind of user GUI that you can set up. At the core of this is the same FMI um, Excel tool on the backside. But in this case, the customer said, you know what? That's not exactly the interface that I want. So we said, fine. Go ahead and develop your own front end sheet, have it be whatever you would like it to do, change the way the parameters are named, add in images, whatever you'd like, bring the results back to this sheet, and then you have a custom sheet that your users interact. They only see this sheet, everything else can be hidden, and this is the way they interact with the model. In Excel, these sort of things are very easy to do. So again, we provide the, the fundamental ability to load and simulate an FMU, and then beyond that, sort of leave it up to the to the customer to decide exactly what kind of interface they want their, their users to see. Uh, in addition to being able to change parameters, we can actually input dynamic traces here for the model. So if you want to actually, in Excel, provide a dynamic trace, whether that be a drive cycle, some kind of temperature trace, anything that's dynamic, you can actually have that data enter directly in Excel and use that to drive the model. And of course, you get all the transient outputs as well. So while we provide normally a table of, of the outputs at the final value, which is certainly handy for steady state simulation, um, we also give you access to all the traces. So you get full access to the results both uh, at the end of the sim and dynamically. This is a nice uh, example of, of some of the automation. And I'll actually show this, this live. So uh, we actually had a customer that wanted um, they actually didn't want their customer, the, their end users, to really even do anything in Excel other than uh, load the FMU. So we built some, um, some automation for them. So they click this button that says load, simulate, and plot, point to the FMU, 
and then it goes off, loads the FMU, sets up the experiment, creates all the plots, and then here we can come back and we've set up a number of cases, but we haven't run them. We can turn on, for example, one of the other ones and change some parameters around. Say simulate and plot, and now we've run another case and compared them. So these are things that with VB scripting are almost trivial to do, um, but they rely on the fundamental ability to, to simulate uh, an FMU in Excel. Last product, FMI Toolbox for CarMaker. I'm not sure how many people um, use CarMaker in this room. CarMaker is a product from IPG. Uh, this toolbox actually allows you to extend CarMaker by using FMUs from, from other state-of-the-art tools. It's used for early system design validation and, and virtualization. Uh, it does offer a GUI with model templates uh, for different vehicle subsystems and integrates with the CarMaker model manager for configuring vehicles. So this, uh, this tool was actually used as part of a, a pretty detailed study that was done at, at BMW as part of the Global Automotive Advisory Group with Dassault Systems, IPG, and Modelon. Um, and it had several different elements. Uh, controls were, uh, control design and Simulink was exported as an FMU using FMI Toolbox for MATLAB. Uh, the plant was implemented in Daimler and exported as an FMU. And then um, CarMaker was used as the integration environment and it sucked in the control side and the physical side and gave the dynamic um, driving simulator and also the driving condition. So this was uh, one of BMW's sort of more detailed cases to say, okay, does it really work to take an FMU from here and an FMU from here and try to bring them all together? So the real advantage, and we've heard this from everyone, is, is being able to support with the same model many different applications and many different ways of running in Simulink and Excel and in tools, tool to tool for FMI compliant tools. So the goal, and I, hopefully everyone that's here is on this list, I'm not sure, I grabbed this slide from someone else, so if, if your tool is not there and, you're, and you, you want to talk to me afterwards, I'll, I'll take the blame for it. But the idea is that let's have all these tools, let's lo let people work where they want, and let's give them everyone a way to, to connect. In terms of Modelon, we do know FMI. We've been involved in the development of, of the standard. We know FMI as developers and as users. We do have a broad uh, portfolio of products, and we've been helping customers uh, develop workflows, leveraging FMI technology with a number of different tools. And we'd certainly be happy to help you as well. Thank you.